Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Lightroom Classic CC. In this video, we're going to take a close look at the Effects tab that's found in the Develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. With the Effects tab, you could apply two different effects to your image, a post-crop vignette and or grain. And usually you would do these effects towards the end of your processing. So usually you do all your processing ahead of time or first. Then one of the last things you'll do is an effect. Now there's a little bit more in this tab than meets the eye. First of all, the top part of the tab is the vignette. And normally we just come in here and we'll put in either a dark vignette by moving the amount slider to the left or a lighter vignette by moving the amount slider to the right. But there's a little bit more here than meets the eye. And I should mention, often we like to add a vignette to our image because it helps draw the viewer's eye towards the middle of the image. We usually don't want the viewer's eye to stray off the image. That just makes it... Uh, not as enjoyable to look at. It's just, I guess, a psychological thing for a person when they're looking at an image to try to get them to linger more towards the middle or more towards the subject of the image and not stray off the image. And the vignette really does help one do that. And you'll notice, again, if we take this amount slider, we move it to left, we'll get this dark vignette. And I'm going to stay with the dark vignette so I could demonstrate the other sliders a little bit more easily. Now, I'll put on this really strong vignette, which typically I would never do, but it gives you an idea what these other sliders do. The midpoint vignette, as I move it to the left, it'll help draw the vignette more towards the middle so it's actually a heavier, thicker, more robust dark vignette. If I move it to the right, it pulls it away and restricts it more towards the corners and the edges. So you can move the midpoint vignette with that slider. The next one is roundness. If I move it to the left, we'll get more of a rectangular vignette. If I was processing a square image, of course it would be a square vignette. And if I move it to the right, we'll get more of an oval. Even as I go further to the right, we'll get more of a circle. So that's what roundness does. Feather is exactly what you would think. If I move it to the left, we have a ver very abrupt non-feathered vignette. And if I move it to the right, we'll increase the feathering and make the transition much, much softer as I go to the right. Now, I'll get to highlights in a minute. If you're using the vignette and you move, let's say, it down a little bit like that, but you want to test the other sliders to see what effect they may have, you could hold the Alt or Option key in while you adjust the other three sliders. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And then when you click on any of those three sliders, you'll temporarily get a maximized vignette to give you a better idea of where you're adjusting, let's say in this case, the midpoint. And then when I let go of the Alt Option key, I'll return to my normal vignette that I had set with the amount at minus 25 in this case. Same thing for roundness. Hold that alter option key in, click on the roundness, and it will temporarily maximize the vignette so I could better see what I'm doing. And of course, for feathering, the same thing. Now, up here, you'll notice we have highlight priority, a little drop down there. We have three choices, highlight priority, color priority, and paint priority. What that means when you're in highlight prior priority, it's going to tend to darken the highlights a bit more than it will the darker tones in the image. So as in this case, when I say darken, it's because I moved this amount slider to the left. Of course, if I move the amount slider to the right, it will tend to do the opposite. It will tend to lighten the highlights a little more. With the highlight slider down here, many times when you're darkening down a highlight, it tends to get muddy. And with that, you could take this highlight slider and you could move it to the right and it will tend to remove some of the vignette from that highlight area so your highlights 
don't look muddy. With the highlight priority type of post crop vignette acts most like a dodge and burn uh, function that you would actually do in a wet dark room. So this most closely rec uh, uh, resembles that dodge and burn that we did with film. The other two though are slightly different. What you'll find with color priority is it minimizes color shifts. You'll find sometimes if you use highlight priority, the darker parts of the image may uh, have a color shift as you apply the vignette. If that is the case, try color priority. And you can see it's less heavy handed, but it tends to not shift the colors as much. But highlight priority isn't as effective when you're with the color priority drop down. So again, think of it if you apply a vignette, you probably want to normally try the highlight priority first. That most resembles a dodge and burn in a wet dark room. But if you find one that you're making the highlights muddy, try to recover the highlights with the highlight slider. Uh, number two, if you find that you're making the uh, darker parts of the image have a color shift, then try the color priority vignette instead and see what that works, if that works. Now the paint overlay style is really just as though you took dark paint or light paint and painted around the edges. It really kind of ignores the pixels underneath. So whereas highlight priority tends to, um, to darken the highlights a bit more before it starts darkening the darker parts of the image and where and then the um, color priority tends to look for the colors and try not to shift any of the colors the paint overlay is just like taking a paintbrush and putting a coat of paint around the edge either a darker coat or a lighter coat and you could see that with that highlights slider is not active. There's no highlight recovery available because it's not really paying attention to the pixels below. You're just kind of grossly applying the vignette to your image. Usually I just stay with highlight priority and I'll reset everything here by double clicking where it says post crop vignette and we'll reset the sliders back to their default positions. Personally I tend to like darker vignettes and I don't like them very heavy handed, so I'll put them on very light, something like that. And if anything, I tend to pull the midpoint away from the center. So I'll move this to the right as opposed to the left. So I'll move that to the right. I usually don't encounter any highlight issues or color shifting in the darker areas of the image because I use usually such a, a light handed vignette. And I'm saying light handed as opposed to a light vignette, meaning a white vignette. I use a darker vignette, but I do not put it on heavily. Now, I, before we get to the grain, I just want to mention very quickly, this is called a, a post-crop vignette. What that means is if you have a vignette on the image and then you decide to crop the image, and then I click done down here, the vignette goes along with your crop. So it is always going to be applied to the cropped image. Conversely, if for some reason you're in lens corrections and you're in the manual tab and you use this vignette, this is a pre-crop vignette. So if you use this one and crop your, or put a vignette on your image and we'll make it a nice heavy vignette, then I go and I crop the image. You'll notice that the crop is, or the uh, vignette didn't come along with the crop. So that's usually why most of us prefer to use a, um, a uh, post crop vignette because sometimes we'll decide to crop after the fact and it will move along with us. Now, this bottom part, grain, is pretty straightforward. 
Sometimes for creative reasons, we like to add grain to our image. So you could just take the amount slider and move it to the right, and you'll see that we're beginning to add grain. And there's two attributes of the grain we could affect with the next two sliders. Size, if I move it to the right, the granules of the grain get larger. And if I move it to the left, the granules of the grain get finer. So you could try to find a happy medium there. Next is roughness, and that is exactly what it means. If you move it to the right, it looks like rougher sandpaper. And if I move it to the left, it tends to smooth it out a little more, although we're since I have size on all the way up, they're relatively large. They're just kind of smoothed out. So it's kind of a weird effects you could get, I guess, when you adjust size and roughness. And again, if you want to reset these back to their default positions, just double click on the word grain. Uh, if you don't like doing that, you could hold the Alt or Option key in. It's Alt if you have a PC option. If you have a Mac, it turns into Reset Grain and you could just click there. Up here turns into Reset Post Crop Vignetting. And you could just single click there and you would reset that as well. So typically I would come in and I would just add a very slight vignette. And so I tend to take midpoint to the right. If I hold that Alt or Option key in while I do it, I could get a better idea of where I'm pushing the limits of my vignette. And I usually don't mess with roundness too much or feathering too much. But I could hold that Alt or Option key as I operate those sliders just to see exactly where the vignette is and what I'm doing to it. So that's really everything you need to know about the effects tab that's found in the develop module of Lightroom Classic CC. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.